While an egg was being fried, someone arrived and congratulated Aram, saying they had heard that he won another contest. They even asked if it was a joke. This was not surprising, as his name was well known in the culinary field. From the photo, it was clear that he won awards one after another. The other person said it was obvious since this cook was incredible. One of the cooks commented that it's really good to work, but it's also necessary to focus on resting a bit. The man mentioned that he heard Aram would be on the highway tomorrow and suggested he should rest a bit. The man continued slicing his food without resting. One of the cooks asked the chef how that accident happened. The chef kept preparing the food while the cooks urged him to rest for now. After all, he might temporarily lose his hearing and sense of smell. The man replied that they didn't need to worry so much. He said this while already finishing preparing the food. He then picked up the food with his chopsticks and commented that most people recover quickly from that kind of accident. He took a bite and told them they worry too much. He started eating while thinking that he just wanted to get back to his normal routine. He swallowed the food and then tears started to flow from his eyes. He hit the table, breaking all the plates with food on them. The protagonist complained that it had been a year and nothing had changed. He started crying in despair, complaining that life was tough. He knelt on the floor, lamenting that he was really trying but couldn't succeed. The protagonist complained that he couldn't taste anything because it still tasted awful. Some time passed, and someone rang the doorbell at the protagonist's house. The dishes were dirty in the sink, and the sound of the doorbell echoed loudly inside the house. The protagonist was sleeping and complained, asking what the hell it was this time. The man outside shouted that he had a delivery for him. The protagonist complained that they were bothering him at that hour just for a delivery. The protagonist decided to walk to the door. When he got there, he opened it and asked what delivery he had for him. The delivery man noticed a strong smell of alcohol coming from inside the house and said it was a real delivery from the delivery team. Before leaving, the delivery man said the protagonist could see how to use the device by looking at the homepage. He said this and then bid farewell, wishing the protagonist a good day. The protagonist said he already imagined he would receive that. It was a kind of headset and a cartridge. He took the headset in his hand and thought he had heard about this real game that revolutionized the virtual reality world. The protagonist, holding the headset, said he never imagined there would be a day when he could play something. After all, he was always full of work, so there was no time left. He said that, apparently you really can't predict what tomorrow will bring. He decided to open the game to see how realistic this real game was, since it was virtual reality. The game started, and on the home screen, a kind of fairy appeared, telling him to become the pioneer with thousands of users worldwide. She informed him that he would be the first ever with the water connection system. The protagonist kept watching his TV while the game fairy called him to prove he could feel the five senses in that virtual reality. The fairy, happy, informed him she was waiting for his dream. Then the home screen of the game, Real, appeared, informing that it was the world's first game with the Korean open server system. The protagonist, not understanding anything, asked what the hell that was. He decided to put on the headphones while thinking about the phrase the fairy said, you will be able to feel the five senses. The protagonist then decided to drink a green liquid that also came with the game while saying he didn't think it was possible anyway. After all, what would it change? Reality is a sham anyway. He then lay down with his virtual reality glasses on and thought it wouldn't hurt to try just once. After all, he should at least test it. He continued lying down, watching the writings pass through the virtual reality glasses. The information started to become more and more extensive. At that moment, the protagonist can only think about how much he wants to taste food again, as he lost his sense of taste after the accident. Just then, the system informs him that the game is restricted to minors. So, those under 18 years old cannot play the game. The system also shows a health warning, stating that if the player has issues related to brightness, they should immediately consult a doctor. Additionally, the player can exit at any time by saying, end of system. At this moment, he sees a beautiful sunny field and a message saying, welcome to the real server of Korea. The protagonist is lying on the ground, not understanding what is happening. He is confused for a moment saying, what's going on? He looks ahead and sees a system asking him to choose his physical characteristics. He recognizes this immediately. He notes that he needs to choose his first name and decides it will be Rice. He feels a bit lost in that system, saying it's his first time, so he doesn't quite understand. He sees a random appearance selection button and decides to press it since he doesn't need to worry about it. So he decisively presses the button that randomly chooses his appearance. His body starts to change as the system informs him that his name will be Rice and his appearance is in progress. He finally has his appearance completed. Now he has white hair, a youthful look, and is wearing a hoodie. The system informs him that Rice's characteristics are complete. He squints slightly as he observes a bright light coming towards him right after the system says he will be teleported to the initial area. Rice then gets teleported to another place. In front of him, he sees several other players fighting some birds. At that moment, the girl from the initial screen appears, saying her name is Yuria, and she is an idol who debuted the game, Real. Rice observes that world, and can't believe what he is seeing. Yuria says she is there to support the dreams of all travelers. Before she can finish the sentence, she notices that Rice looks strange. Rice is more focused on the air he is breathing, thinking that he is a traveler then. He watches the wind rustling the trees and says that the air is very refreshing. 
He looks at how green the grass is, and the good smell of the earth. Rice feels embarrassed, but imagines that it was just like this a year ago before the accident he suffered. The smell was very good. Rice starts sweating, imagining he would do anything to have a chance to feel something again. He then kneels down, grabs the grass from the ground, and says he needs to taste it to see if he can feel any taste this time. Rice simply decides to put all the grass in his mouth. People next to him ask what the hell he is doing. Another person asks if he has a mental problem by any chance. Rice starts crying with joy, saying that the taste is bitter, so that means he can really taste things again. He can't believe that this is happening. He starts saying that it's been a year since he tasted anything. He says this while a bird comes towards him. The enormous bird, which had a horn on its head, tries to attack Rice. Rice is bewildered by what is happening. The bird, which looks more like a giant chicken, tries to peck Rice's head. He starts screaming desperately, asking if that really is a chicken. At this moment, a man with pink hair arrives, striking the giant chicken's head. The man laughing asks Rice to stop daydreaming. After all, this is a hunting spot. After saying this, he asks if Rice is a beginner. Rice, looking at the man, asks what this hunting spot is and if it's a dangerous place. The man with pink hair smiling says that, as the name suggests, hunting spots are automatically dangerous, especially for a beginner. The man leaves happily and says Rice can keep the items the chicken dropped. Rice thanks him but wanted to ask more questions, as he doesn't understand anything that is happening there. Rice starts yelling, saying there were two of them. However, it's no use, as he realizes the man with pink hair has already disappeared. Rice looks at the eggs, and the system informs him that they are horned chicken eggs. Rice finds the name, horned chicken egg strange, as it is quite unique. He wonders why it is an item since it is much larger than a regular egg. Rice is pensive, imagining what he should do with these two giant eggs. He then gathers a smooth stone and some branches, sets up a campfire, and places the eggs to fry. He figures that all he can do is try to fry the eggs he just obtained. Worried about the result, he takes a fork in his hand, an item provided by Spork. He stirs the egg to see if it's ready. After all, the only thing left is to taste it. Still concerned, Rice decides to bring the egg to his mouth. He puts it in his mouth and starts chewing slowly, as he hasn't tasted anything in years. He calmly swallows the piece of fried egg he put in his mouth. Rice is extremely happy, thinking he finally managed to taste a fried egg. He says it's a pleasure to know that egg, and tasting things is wonderful. Extremely happy, Rice says the taste is a thousand times better than he remembered. He also comments that the egg yolk is simply sensational. Rice, still extremely happy, thinks that the taste of that yolk, the delicious flavor that can only be experienced when the yolk is still hot, is surreal. Several people are passing by, and Rice can only think that he was afraid he would never be able to taste anything again. He starts crying while eating the fried egg. To him, hope would never die. He observes the people in front of him, fighting against the giant horned chickens, and says that even if it's not real, he's still happy to have tasted something again. He watches two people fighting against one of the giant chickens, and says he wishes all of this were real, instead of a virtual reality game. He looks again at his fried eggs, which he is eating little by little, and says he is very happy with that moment, so he will just enjoy it as much as he can. At that moment, a girl looks at him sitting on the ground. The girl is trying to get his attention, but he doesn't hear her, so she decides to get closer and asks if he can hear her. She asks if he is really eating at a time like that. Rice asks if she was referring to him. The woman, awkwardly, says yes. She noticed he was on the ground eating something, and it seemed really delicious. She says she has the necessary ingredients and would give him a reward as well. Looking at Rice, the woman asks if he could make a fried egg for her too. She says to wait a moment, and she will go buy it. At this moment, Rice notices a system notification informing him that someone wants to do business with him. The system informs him that Mary has requested to do business for a fried egg, and asks if Rice wants to accept or not. She, looking at Rice's food, asks if he could sell just one fried egg to her. Mary says that the smell was extremely delicious, and that the food looked great. She says she wants to eat at any cost. Rice asks her how much she thinks a fried egg costs. She responds that she imagines it costs 500 of the local currency. Rice realizes he doesn't quite understand the values of that world. He then smiles and says it can be for 500 of the local currency. He thinks he never imagined he could sell food within the game as well. Rice continues preparing the egg while Mary watches, saying it looks very good. Mary is enchanted by the dish, saying it's almost like a portion of scrambled ostrich egg. She is fascinated, and says she didn't know it was possible to eat in the game. She immediately takes a portion and puts it in her mouth. Rice is hoping everything goes well. After all, even though he's in a game, this woman is his first customer. Rice also says he is extremely anxious, since he doesn't know if it really tastes good, as it has been months since he stopped being a chef. The woman, upon tasting the food, makes a scary face and asks what it is. Rice is shocked, and wonders if the food was only good to him. He panics, wondering what to do now since she apparently hated the food. The woman says that the food is simply incredible. Rice is surprised to hear that because he feared the worst. Mary is extremely amazed, asking how he managed to make it taste so good. She says it's even more delicious than real food. She also asks if he is a genius, saying it's much tastier than high-class meals. Rice feels embarrassed, and thanks her for the compliments. He starts to think that this is just his style. He didn't even remember the taste. Mary opens her system while saying that even the texture was incredible, identical to real life. 
She says she will get the money right away. She then takes a bag of money and gives him the 500. Rice realizes that at that moment, he was being paid for the food he cooked for a customer. Mary runs off while thanking him for the delicious food and saying she will want to taste it again soon. Rice says that's fine and thanks her for the appreciation. He just imagines how that simple gesture made his day amazing. Rice starts to think that this game is called real. He thinks that if he can really do whatever he wants there, he wonders if it would be possible to achieve his dreams there. He feels a bit sad, saying that it is just a game. Rice looks at the horizon and imagines that since he can't achieve his dreams in the real world because of the accident, he will achieve them in that game. Rice then says, exit the system. The system informs him that the game is shutting down. At that moment, he returns to the real world. He looks at his table full of bottles and thinks that the game exited quickly. He didn't imagine that it would feel like being in one world and returning to the real world. It was completely new to him. Rice tries to smell his room and already imagines that he won't be able to smell anything in the real world. The same goes for his taste. He puts his finger on his tongue and realizes he can't taste anything. Frustrated, Rice puts his hand on his head and says that unfortunately, that is his reality. He still remembers that he has a part-time job interview soon and he needs to eat before leaving. He is pensive since this is the routine he has always followed. Rice takes his game headset and puts it on the table, saying that unfortunately, it is just a dream. The headset remains on the table. He then gets ready and goes to the job interview. There, he says his name is Rim, and he is there to submit his resume. Remember that Rim is his real-world name, as is Aram. The interviewer starts interviewing Rim and says that he meets the requirements for the job. He asks Rim if he has quick hands, which would be very good. Rim, looking completely different after taking a shower and getting ready, says that yes, he can handle it with ease. The interviewer informs him that a kitchen assistant is not limited to just washing dishes. In addition, he will need to cook sometimes. The interviewer asks if that's alright. Rim responds that yes, it's not a problem. The interviewer tells Rim that it's okay because he doesn't seem like he will ignore these tasks, given his sincerity. The interviewer comes closer and asks if Rim is aware that kitchen workers have fiery personalities. The interviewer warns him because he doesn't want Rim to quit after a few days. Rim responds that he is aware and that it's not a problem. The interviewer then informs Rim that he can start the next day. The interviewer also says he will keep Rim's resume and certificate with him. Rim thanks him, but asks if he won't review the resume before finalizing the hiring. The interviewer asks why he would be so strict in hiring a kitchen assistant for a street diner. He just asks Rim to try to be useful at work and please not to be late. Inside the restaurant, a cook is preparing the food. This cook observes the owner hiring that person. Rim bows and thanks him for the attention, saying he won't be late and that they will see each other tomorrow. The interviewer, who is also the owner of the restaurant, says that's fine and they'll see each other tomorrow. Rim remembers his character in the game and thinks that even though he lost his sense of smell and taste, for now, everything is fine. He then looks at the sky and imagines that little by little, he will progress. Rim decides to return to the game, where his character is named Rice. A blonde-haired man is jumping, ready to attack the enemy. This enemy is a giant horned chicken, and he hits the chicken's belly squarely. At this moment, other chickens start chasing him. He runs away, calling them damned beasts. At that moment, a purple-haired woman prepares her bow and arrow to attack those chickens. She gets ready while asking him to be careful. She then shoots and hits the chicken's head squarely. The man doesn't even see it, as he is running away desperately with his eyes closed. The purple-haired woman asks the blonde man to be more careful. After all, this is the real game. She says he should be more cautious with his actions. He thanks her for the explanation, and is amazed by someone wielding a bow and arrow like that. He says she was incredible. She asks if he really thought so since it was nothing special to her. The blonde man laughs, imagining he got the best teammate possible. Rice is beside them, preparing chicken meat for himself. The man and the woman continue talking, wondering if they should recruit more people for the team since they want to face the final boss. Rice is frenetically preparing the chicken meat that people left behind. He continues his preparation, imagining that the meat is extremely similar to real life. He remembers the introduction when Yuria appeared on the game screen, informing that the reality of the real game was unparalleled, and that it would turn dreams into reality. She also said, a pioneering fantasy life with tens of millions of users around the world. Rice thought it was misleading advertising when he saw that. He continues tasting the local plants and says he now really believes it, having experienced it firsthand. Even his thoughts have changed. He imagines that this real game is more real than real life, like a perfect illusion. He says this especially about the herbs he just picked. He swears it smells like rosemary. He wants to try it as well. Rice makes a sour face, saying he really shouldn't have gotten so excited to try it since it's extremely bitter. He looks at the sky and says that at least it's definitely rosemary. He finally prepares the meat and says he will try making chicken skewers. He seasons the chicken with a little rosemary and says that last time he only made fried eggs, so this time he wants to increase the difficulty a bit. He starts lighting a campfire while thinking he wants to try something more complex this time. Rice then leaves the chicken skewer roasting and can't wait to try it since it looks very good. The players nearby start to smell the meat and ask if everyone is smelling something good there. A person with a hatchet asks if that smell is extremely similar to grilled chicken by any chance. The man replies yes, but who would be crazy enough to be cooking something like that in the real game? 
People then notice Rice standing there holding the chicken skewer, and wonder if that person is a user, or an NPC in the game. They can't identify it since it's such a crazy thing. Rice is happy to finally finish his skewer, celebrating that it's his first meat dish. The system notifies that the delicious chicken skewer restores 15 hunger points when consumed. The people observing from a distance ask if that person standing is a chef NPC, and if what he is holding is really a chicken skewer. Another comments that it's incredible since it appears he is selling something delicious. Everyone decides to run over to see. Rice, without wasting time, starts smelling that delicious chicken. He says that by the smell it's definitely chicken. A girl approaches Rice and says she would love to try that chicken skewer, and asks how much he would sell it for. The guy next to her whispers in her ear to ask the chef if he can lower the price a bit. Rice looks at them while thinking how happy he is at that moment, and then considers how much he should charge based on the fried egg he sold last time. Rice thinks for a moment, and says he can sell it for 3,001. The people agree, so he takes some unicorn chicken meat, and says he will prepare it immediately. Rice goes full steam ahead, cutting the chicken pieces. Some time passes, and everyone is eating the chicken skewer. A man compliments Rice, saying he is a true chef. He says that a skewer like that for 1500 won is quite expensive, but after tasting it, he realized it was really worth it. Meanwhile, the man in the blue jacket is extremely happy, saying that it was undoubtedly worth it. After all, he didn't even know it was possible to eat something so good in the real game. The woman is amazed, and asks her husband if she can have another. The husband replies that it is really good, but unfortunately it's too expensive, so it's not possible. The man in the green beanie behind them just laughs, saying he hates couples. He says this while also enjoying the chicken skewer. At that moment, Rice is frantically preparing several chicken skewers at the same time. He watches the chicken frying little by little and says that the sound is incredible. Rice smiles, takes a knife, and continues to prepare the chicken, saying that he is slowly getting used to cooking exactly as he used to. Rice then starts to remember all the experience he gained in the real world. He imagines the time when he was a real chef and thinks that it was all very worthwhile. Rice is preparing several chicken skewers, while many people around are also tasting them. He thinks that, without a doubt, he will be able to start over again there. In the middle of preparing the chicken skewer, he touches the meat to take a piece off the skewer, and notices something strange. The system notifies that an achievement has been unlocked, the Achievement Fighter, which requires hitting monsters more than a thousand times. Rice is confused, asking what that was. The system notifies that a skill has been acquired. Rice, reading it, asks, What do you mean a skill has been acquired? The system notifies that the skill in question is called Weak Point, and is an F-rank passive skill. With this passive skill, the user can see the weak points of one-star monsters. Hitting a monster's weak point has a high chance of killing it instantly. Rice reads this and asks, what a weak point is? What is a passive skill? What is all this? He has no idea what is happening. The system also notifies that Rice received another skill called weak point, an F-rank active skill. This skill focuses all the user's strength on the tip of their weapon, thus inflicting critical damage. It has an increased damage of 15% and decreased saturation of 30%. Rice reads this from the system, and says that it seems this other skill is an offensive skill. Rice looks around and thinks these are interesting skills, and wonders if he should test them here. He sees some people fighting the unicorn chickens. One of the men asks how many of those chickens they need to kill for the boss to finally appear. The green-haired man replies that they probably need to kill about 50 more. They're probably close. Rice stands up, thinking he should do that too. After all, he can't just keep cooking what he catches. He should try hunting some unicorn chickens too. He stands still for a moment, and then, worried, wonders how he should start. After all, he has never hunted before. Rice then approaches a man who is in a frantic battle with a unicorn chicken, and asks him for a moment. The guy, trembling, trying to hold off the chicken's charge, asks what he wants. Rice says that if it's not too much trouble, he would like to hunt with them. The green-haired man is completely baffled. The other man says he doesn't mind, and that Rice can do whatever he wants. He doesn't even know why Rice is asking. The green-haired man turns and asks Rice if he is asking to join their team. He also asks if Rice has a good weapon. Rice happily shows his knife, which he uses to prepare food, and says that this is his weapon. The men see a unicorn chicken approaching and say they will leave it for Rice to kill. If he can manage to kill at least one monster like that, they will let him join the group. Rice, terrified, asks how he will kill such a giant chicken by himself. The green-haired man tells Rice not to be scared. After all, it's just a game. At that moment, the weak point skill activates. Rice's eyes begin to shine, and he wonders what is happening. He notices something glowing on the chicken's head. Rice realizes that this is probably the effect of his new skill. He looks closely at the glowing spot on the chicken's head, and thinks that must be its weak point. Full of confidence, Rice jumps with his knife towards the unicorn chicken, thinking he now knows its weak point. However, as he gets closer, the unicorn chicken headbutts him, throwing him far away and causing Rice to drop his knife. The men are startled by this. Rice falls hard to the ground, nearly unconscious. The men observe him on the ground and figure it was expected since Rice is a novice. The other man asks if Rice really believed he could defeat a unicorn chicken using just a knife. The men burst out laughing, asking if Rice is okay since that must have hurt. The purple-haired man, laughing hard, says it's too much for a novice and quite embarrassing. 
Rice tries to get up but his body trembles a lot. He finally stands and sees the men fighting the chickens again. The green-haired man shouts to Rice, asking him to just watch the others fight since he clearly lacks combat skills. He also says he will give Rice another chance later. Rice can only think about how he totally failed and that it's more complicated than he imagined. Rice puts his hand on his head and thinks that, besides, when he got hit by the chicken, the pain felt very real. Rice wonders if he should give up hunting. He remembers when he was a novice cook and his superior kept telling him that the food was going to burn, saying he was tired of reminding him to add a certain amount of water to the pot. Rice was always apologizing while his superior said it was okay. He just needed to empty the pot and start again. At that moment, Rice looks down, picks up his knife again, and runs towards the unicorn chickens, thinking he must try one more time. At that moment, the system notifies that the boss field has been created, and that the boss, unicorn chicken, is approaching. The men look up and see something gigantic approaching them. They take a closer look and see it as an extremely large unicorn chicken, almost ten times their size. The man in the brown shirt asks if that is really the boss, and, if so, can they defeat it? The green-haired man replies that yes, he is 100% sure that this unicorn chicken is the boss, and they are definitely in trouble. The two decide to charge at the boss, saying they must at least try, since they have been after this boss for a long time. At that moment, the system notifies that the players, Seeking and Hemo, have entered the unicorn chicken field. Rice reads this, and doesn't understand since the notification appeared suddenly. The system then notifies that the boss, Unicorn Chicken, will attack the mentioned players if they do not leave the field within three seconds. Hemo still doesn't understand, and asks Seeking what is happening. The three-second countdown begins as Seeking says he doesn't know what this is, since he has never seen a related post on the game's forum. The countdown goes to two, while Hemo says it's really the first time he's seen this. The countdown reaches one, and they ask if this is a different boss. After the countdown, the system notifies in red that the boss, Unicorn Chicken, will start attacking the players, Seeking, and Hemo. The boss then looks at the two and attacks them immediately. They are startled by its speed. The man in the brown shirt starts trembling asking what is that? The unicorn chicken boss looks at one of the players and hits him squarely, throwing him far away. The green-haired man is shocked, screaming Hyung's name. Just as Hyung is thrown, Rice comes running to help fight the boss. The system notifies that the player, Rice, has entered the boss field unicorn chicken. The system shows a new warning that the boss will attack everyone within the field in three seconds. Rice becomes serious and imagines that if something goes wrong, he could really die there. The countdown starts at 3. At this moment, the unicorn chicken boss continues attacking the green-haired man, who defends himself with his shield. The countdown goes to 2, and the man is cornered, thinking that even though the boss is just a monster, this is too much for them. Rice runs towards them, saying to wait, that he will help. The green-haired man, indignant, tells Rice to stay away, or he will really die. The countdown goes to 1. Rice rushes with his dagger, and his skill activated. The system then notifies that the boss will also attack the player Rice, with his skill activated, Rice clearly sees the weak point of the unicorn chicken, even though it's in a very strange place. Rice runs up and stabs his dagger into the boss's weak point. The chicken is startled and begins to cry, not understanding how it got attacked there. The boss turns and looks at Rice. He is stunned as she looks at him. Then furious, the boss starts pecking furiously at Rice, but the two men quickly run towards him and raise their shields to protect Rice. The green-haired man still complains, asking if this is serious. After all, he made it clear that Rice should flee. A man observing the fight from outside asks if that monster is real, as it's enormous. Hyung shouts that he will attack first from the other side. Seeking asks what he is thinking. He says he will immediately add them to the same group, so they need to hurry to defeat the boss. Rice grips his dagger tightly while Seeking shouts, not to worry. After all, it's just a game. Rice thinks that's true. He looks at the unicorn chicken boss attacking the two men and thinks that it's not even real, so he doesn't need to be afraid. He watches the giant chicken throwing Hyung away again, and thinks that even though the game isn't real, how can he not be scared of that? The man in the brown shirt braces himself as he is thrown, then jumps at full speed towards the boss, shouting that he's attacked that boss so many times so why won't it just die? The furious chicken turns to him and then attacks with its horn, piercing Hyung's stomach. Rice watches Hyung falling to the ground and can't believe that person is really dying? Hyung thinks all of this sucks, but he will reconnect later and apologizes to everyone for his failure. Rice starts to panic, thinking that apparently when a person dies, they disappear immediately. He wonders what kind of game is this real? Rice is impressed, thinking the game is too realistic, and even knowing it's fake, it still scares him. Seeking continues to defend against the boss's pecs, and thinks that the boss is really powerful, and he's not sure how much longer he can hold it off. Seeking closes his eyes, and thinks he won't be able to defend much longer since his HP is extremely low. At this moment, Rice activates his weak point skill and jumps at the boss again, always aiming at the spot indicated by the skill. Rice is holding a horn as a weapon, and the horn is overflowing with energy. With all his strength, Rice pierces through the chicken, delivering an attack using both his passive and active skills. The green-haired man is astonished by the scene. Rice can't believe he managed to do it. He almost collapses to the ground as he had thrown himself fully at the boss's weak point. Rice is surprised by what he gained from defeating the boss.
The system informs him that he earned the achievement, Hunter of Unicorn Chickens, which required defeating the boss, Unicorn Chicken. Rice received an F-rank passive skill called the Strongest Chicken. Its effect is that during the night, from 6 p.m. to 5 a.m., his damage is increased by 15%, losing the effect outside of this time frame. Seeking runs toward Rice and says that was incredible. He didn't imagine Rice had combat skills. Rice, embarrassed, says it was just a lucky strike. Meanwhile, the people observing from outside point out that it was the guy with white and green hair who defeated the boss. And that's amazing. A pink-haired girl, watching from a distance, asks how they defeated the boss. She asks from afar what the boss's drops might have been. She is envious, saying she now wants to kill a boss too. She then decides to get closer, raising her hand and asking whoever defeated the boss to look back. She approaches, asking if the person responsible for defeating the boss is named Rice. She is pleased they are finally meeting. She says she saw a post from Rice at the real cafe, and she was looking for him. She also says she really wanted to find him, as she is a big fan. Rice, not understanding anything, asks what cafe, and what was written in that post. Apparently the reviews about his chicken skewers are very popular. She starts walking closer to him and says she's not just there to eat the chicken skewers. She then grabs Rice's hand and smiling, asks him if he would like to start a business with her. She also introduces herself, saying her name is Melina. With a sparkle in her eyes, she says it's a restaurant business. She asks him to trust her so they can become partners. After that, we have a presentation of the game. Real is the first real-time virtual reality RPG. The game asks a hero to form an army to face the forces of evil. The game also informs that the prize is in money and will be awarded only to the strongest hero. The prize is nothing less than 100 billion won. The game's advertisement states that anyone can be a hero. They just need to strive to be the strongest. All they need to do is play real. The players are ecstatic about the scale of the game. At that moment, Seeking is preparing something. A meal is being prepared in a cauldron. Rice continues cutting some food. Seeking stops to think why it feels like he's at a part-time job. He wonders if he is really playing the real game at that exact moment. Seeking, along with the group, feels frustrated, imagining that they missed the opportunity to stop playing a long time ago. Melina continues helping, thinking that she is being rejected at that moment for being a stranger. But if she collaborates, she might change the group's opinion. She can only think about the reviews she saw about the chicken skewer and how much she wants to try them. She watches Rice and asks what he's doing. Rice seems to be holding some kind of nut in his hand. She sees him bringing the food to his mouth and thinks that Rice is really careful with what he cooks. At that moment, Rice makes a completely bizarre face and starts crying. Melina is startled and asks what happened, wondering if he ate something that bad. Melina grabs Rice's attention and asks why he chose that name since it means Eros, when translated from English to Portuguese. Rice replies that it's because he loves cooking, that's all. Rice observes a mushroom while Melina comments that she was just curious and asks if he uses this name in all other games as well. Rice responds that he has never played another game. She is surprised by this and asks if it's true that this is the first game he has ever played. Rice replies yes, and she thinks it's cool. Seeking says it makes sense that it's his first time since he has never seen anyone asking about hunting before. Seeking also mentions that he heard Rice is quite famous at the cafe. Apparently someone saved a video of Rice. The horned chicken was especially famous. Rice, still preparing his food, asks if he is referring to that giant unicorn chicken. Rice comments that unexpectedly, this real game has many timed functions. Rice imagines that he is 28 years old and a novice at this game. He tells his group that he tested some new sauces for seasoning. He also asks them to put mushrooms in the sauce. Seeking and Melina immediately respond that they will do so. They look at the cauldron and ask if they can just pour them in. Rice replies yes. Rice, looking at the cauldron, wonders if the good smell is because he is so close. As soon as Seeking and Melina put the mushrooms in the cauldron, the aroma rises instantly. Rice continues preparing the food, thinking he just needs to stir it for a while. Melina is already drooling, only able to think about how much she wants to eat right then. Rice opens his system and accesses his storage. He goes through his inventory and selects the chicken meat, imagining he will need it at that moment. The chicken meat is then summoned. Rice is surprised that it wasn't cold. He imagines this is probably due to the game's technology. Rice looks at Seeking and Melina and tells them it's time to fill their stomachs. The two, happy, say they will eat immediately. They look at the dish and say it looks extremely delicious. The system informs them that this is giant chicken meat with mushroom sauce. It increases ingestion satisfaction by four and boosts attack by one after eating. Everyone prepares their plates and thanks Rice for the delicious meal. Seeking takes the food to his mouth, wondering if it will taste less delicious than real food. Melina, also bringing the food to her mouth, is happy that she is finally eating food prepared by the famous chef, Rice. Seeking takes a bite. Melina does too. As they do, they feel as if they are teleported to another dimension. They start looking around, confused. At this moment, they observe pieces of chicken flying everywhere. They wonder if it's an aerial attack with all these chicken pieces flying around. They think the freshness of the meat is overwhelming. They look up and see a mushroom riding on a piece of chicken and ask what the heck is that? Seeking, scared, asks what that horrible mushroom is. The mushrooms mounted on the roasted chickens shout that Seeking cut them earlier. So they hope he is ready for battle. 
seeking, and Melina panic, saying they don't have a weapon at that moment. Seeking looks down and wonders what the heck is happening. They notice they are standing on a giant tongue and comment that at best, this is the world of flavors. The mushroom starts laughing and says that their taste buds won't favor them in that world. So what are they going to do about it? The two begin to fall from the sky, accompanied by the roasted chickens and mushrooms. Seeking and Melina start screaming at each other, not understanding what is happening. Melina then reaches out, shouting Seeking's name. He manages to grab her hand. They find themselves facing several giant unicorn chickens, even dressed in clothes. Seeking imagines all the giant chickens they have eaten up to that point. Suddenly they return to reality and look at Rice, who is taking food from the plate. Seeking and Melina are confused about what just happened. They think, honestly, there must be marijuana as a seasoning in this food to have such a trip like that. Rice looks at the two and asks if they liked the food. The two, with a sparkle in their eyes, say that the food is sensational. They had never eaten anything so delicious in their lives. Rice is surprised by this, but he notices something appearing in front of him. While still seated, he sees that the system says he has received the passive skill, chef's luck, an F-rank skill. There is a very low chance that more golden dishes or high-class food will be made again. The user will have an eclipse buff or a permanent stats effect. Rice is surprised by this, while Seeking and Melina congratulate him since they didn't know this could happen. Rice checks his status and sees his profession as chef. He has 120 health, 60 attack points, 15 agility points. His satiety is at 52 out of a maximum of 120. He has 15 defense points and 10 points in cooking. Night then falls. Seeking tells Rice that it's getting late and he needs to leave. Seeking asks if he wants to send a friend request and asks the same to Melina. She says she does. Rice says he also wants to since he is a beginner and friendships would be welcome. Seeking informs Rice that if he continues through the forest, he will find a city on the other side where he can do a lot of business. Rice is happy and thanks him for the information. Seeking then thanks him for the meal, and Melina says she will quickly level up to partner with Rice. Rice, feeling shy, says it's okay. Rice observes the trail and imagines that now he just needs to walk. He then closes his eyes and lifts his head, thinking how good the night air smells. He still thinks that even though it's just a game, it's very refreshing. He then lowers his head and looks at his status in the system again. He smiles, seeing that his profession there is chef. He looks up at the starry sky and imagines it has been a long journey to get there, so he can start over again. He then decides to leave the game, as it is already late. He starts to take off his headset and wonders how long he played. He then takes his phone and sees that it's almost 4 in the morning. Looking at the phone screen, he thinks he wants to sleep at least 5 hours since the next day will be his first day at his part-time job. Rim then places the headset on the table and says he didn't even notice the time passing. He wonders if that's why people like games so much. Rim then turns to the other side and says he will try to sleep. He is restless for a while in bed. He is fiddling with his phone, thinking that he only has 4 hours to sleep, but he thinks he will sleep after reading a bit about Real Online. He sees a topic asking if sending a video of the game real is illegal. The video in question is of Rice fighting the boss. He finds that scene incredible and wonders if he really fought like that. He thinks that even though it's a video of him, it seems unique. Rim starts to see his character in the game and says he really has a beautiful appearance now that he sees it from the outside and wonders how other players see him. Rim wonders why there is only that one video saved. He remembers that ever since Seeking asked him to start recording, he is sure he recorded more videos. Rim feels down, thinking he is sure he saved a video of him cooking. Rim begins to fall asleep, thinking that next time he will try to save it. Before sleeping, he realizes that only highlight videos can be selected as saved demo videos. Rim realizes how bad this is. The next day the players are in full swing fighting the horned chickens. One player faces the boss and tries to replicate the attack that Rim did on that giant chicken, but without success. The giant chicken stares at the player while he wonders if the player Rice really did it that way, because it apparently didn't work. The giant chicken gets angry and makes the player fly away. One of the players starts laughing, saying that the guy who flew away should have stabbed the boss with a toothpick and not a knife. The other person hearing this says, that's not quite right. The person who went flying complains of pain and insists that they are sure Rice attacked that way. They start wondering who Rice is for the move to have worked only for him. At that moment, they hear someone shouting that the chicken skewers are costing 1,001. It was Melina, announcing the crispy chicken skewers for 1,001. She shouts that players need to hurry because only 50 skewers will be sold. She also announces that fried eggs will be sold for 301. Players grab the skewers in their hands. The man in red clothing asks, what the heck is that? It looks like it wasn't cooked in the middle. The woman says hers is weird too, even though it looks fully cooked. The man says he doesn't want those strange skewers. They want Rice's skewers. Melina feels a bit embarrassed and apologizes, saying her skills are quite poor at the moment, so she will give those skewers for free. Melina clenches her fist and says that Rice looked so cool while cooking the chicken skewers, so she can't fall behind. She then starts shouting again saying that a chicken skewer cost 1,001. She thinks she needs to catch up to rice at all costs. At this moment, the system notifies Melina of an achievement. The achievement is, can you hear my voice? Requirement. Continuously shout for more than five hours. The reward is an F-rank megaphone skill. Melina just completed the achievement and received the reward. 
She looks at the skill and thinks it's incredible. The F-rank megaphone skill she just received is a passive skill. It has a maximum capacity of 10% and a local range increased by 1%. Melina is extremely happy and says that although the skill isn't related to combat or cooking, it's still a skill. She is happy since not many people in real have a skill, whatever it may be. The man who had bought the chicken skewer goes to buy another chicken, and again it is undercooked. He is frustrated by this. Melina, excited, continues to announce her chicken skewers, saying they are only 1,001. Meanwhile, in real life, Rim is cutting onions at his new job. The restaurant owner asks if he really knows how to use a knife a bit. He observes Rim's agility in cutting onions and says it seems he has a lot of experience. Apparently Rim has good qualifications. The owner compliments him, saying he started very well. The restaurant chef watches Rim and wonders what's up with him. The chef thinks Rim is ridiculously pretentious and useless. After thinking this, he calls Rim's attention. Rim turns and asks how he can help. The chef asks who taught him to cut like that. The chef approaches Rim and asks if he thinks he's in some kind of competition to be cutting so fast. Rim apologizes if he made him uncomfortable. The chef points out that such speed is very pretentious. With that speed, it's impossible to maintain a consistent size. The chef says this but notices that the onion was perfectly cut, which he finds incredible. The chef acknowledges that the onions were well cut but still hates pretension. The chef asks Rim to fry some eggs for the next dish. He instructs Rim not to break the yolks for sunny side up eggs and asks if he knows what that means. Rim responds that yes, he will keep that in mind when preparing them. Rim starts frying the eggs and thinks he doesn't even remember how many years it's been since he showed his cooking to someone. After all, it's his cooking that he can no longer taste or smell. Rim laments this and thinks that since he can't taste the food he's preparing due to his lack of taste, he will have to rely on his techniques. He watches the egg frying and thinks that in the game, real, he cooked for hours and wonders if he can call that cooking. He brings his hand to the lid and wonders if he will do well here too. He remembers when he cooked scrambled eggs for Mary, and she said they were delicious, and couldn't wait to try them again. He covered the frying pan and then remembered Seeking and Melina after they had tasted his food, saying it was incredibly delicious. They had never tasted anything so good in their lives. The dish is ready, and the waitress takes the bibimbap to the table. The customers look at the dish and say it looks a bit different from other times. They ask if the restaurant's chef has changed. The waitress replies, no, the chef is the same. They ask if she's sure because they always eat there and this dish is definitely different from usual. One of them scoops up the fried egg, saying it doesn't matter much since they are starving. He also notes that the yolk doesn't look as bright and runny as usual. He then takes a bite, thinking it must be his imagination. After tasting the fried egg, he is amazed by the taste. Manager Shin, who was the one who tasted the egg, says it's incredible. He asks the assistant to taste it too, as the bibimbap is sensational. The waitress asks why he is acting like that and if he tasted a rock. The chef hears the conversation from the kitchen and listens to the manager saying that it's not that. He just found the fried egg very good and wonders if this bibimbap is good. Then the other dishes must be great too. The chef doesn't like hearing these compliments since Rim was the one who prepared the dish. The assistant tastes the dish and says the bibimbap is really delicious and asks if it has always been this good because he doesn't remember. He also says that the fried egg is truly an art. He praises the lunch, saying it exceeded his expectations. Rim, in the kitchen, listens while the assistant says the egg white was extremely tender and the way the yolk bursts is a masterpiece. Rim remembers people praising his dishes when he was rice. People also loved his dish, saying how amazing it was. Rim feels happy and thinks that although he lost his senses, his experience and skills won't betray him. Rim is at the stove, thinking that his body can only taste inside the game, but even in real life, he can start over again. He says he will try again and fully trust the new experiences he has gained. The chef looks at him, not satisfied with this. Rim's shift finally ends, and he is relieved that it's time to go. It was his first day at his part-time job. Rim decides to wash his hands, thinking it has been a while since he last did this, so he isn't used to it, but he is happy that everything turned out well, since he apparently didn't make any mistakes. Rim then thanks his boss and says he will be leaving now that the shift is over. His boss says that's fine, and thanks him for doing so well on his first day. Rim says it was nothing, and that it was all thanks to his guidance. Rim starts walking through the restaurant toward the exit, and then meets the waitress. She tells Rim that now the two of them will be working together, so he should say goodbye to her too. Rim agrees and thanks her for her help that day. She then asks if she can call him Appa. Rim replies that she can. She says he can talk more comfortably with her since she is younger than him. Rim laughs lightly and asks if that's okay. The waitress calls him Appa and says yes, and that he did very well that day. She also comments that he was so calm that it didn't seem like it was his first day of work. She asks him to be careful on his way home and hopes to see him tomorrow. Rim then heads to the door and says he'll see her tomorrow. After Rim leaves, the restaurant owner asks Mireille what she thinks of Rim. She replies that she thinks he is amazing and very fast with knives. The chef hears the entire conversation, while Mireille says that Rim didn't make any mistakes and is definitely different from the others. The restaurant owner then turns to Daewon and asks what he thought of Rim's first day. Daewon responds that Rim did fairly well, but they need to evaluate him further, as he thought Rim was quite inexperienced that day. The restaurant owner asks what he means by inexperienced. 
Daywin says that Rim isn't bad at cooking, but he could barely remember where the tools and other things are. The restaurant owner, not understanding, asks if that's not normal since it was Rim's first day getting to know the place, and it was only a part-time shift. Daywin gets frustrated, and says that considering Rim has apparently worked in this field before, he should remember these things. The restaurant owner says he understands now. Mire says that the fried egg from earlier looked delicious, and she would have liked to try it. Night falls, the restaurant continues operating after Rim has left. One of the customers calls the waitress, asking for a cider and alcoholic drink. She, who is attending another customer, says she will be right there. Mire happily carries the customer's dishes. At this moment, one of them asks when his spicy pork will arrive. She informs him that it's being prepared, and will be ready in a minute. A couple is dining at the restaurant. The woman asks the man if he knows what that bracelet on the waitress's arm is. He replies that he has no idea. She says it's a Herc signature bracelet. The woman says that the bracelet probably costs around a million won. They continue looking at the bracelet on Mire's arm, while the man asks if she's sure about that. He wonders why the bracelet is so expensive. Maybe because it contains gold. The woman responds yes, but the million won price is for used bracelets. The new ones are much more expensive. The two continue observing the happy waitress, and the man asks the woman if she is sure about this because why would a waitress wear something so expensive to work? The woman replies that she is absolutely certain. After all, it bears the brand's signature so there's no mistake. At that moment, the restaurant owner notices something wrong. He observes the customers and thinks that during lunch, all the customers were very excited about the bibimbap, saying it was extremely delicious. But now, at night, everyone is silent. He tries to understand what happened. The owner sits down, reflecting on what it could be. He thinks about the fact that the new employee, Rim, was the most involved in preparing the dish. After he left, the customers calmed down. The restaurant owner becomes increasingly thoughtful, wondering if Rim has some secret to making the dish so delicious. He continues thinking deeply about what it could be, and then has an idea. He wonders if it could be the sesame seeds. At that moment, Rim finally arrives home. He brought some groceries to prepare his dinner. Rim thinks it's been a while since he cooked at home. He looks at all the ingredients he bought, and decides that now that he's working, he needs to return to a healthy routine. So he decides to cook for himself again. Rim then rolls up his sleeves and says he will start slowly by preparing the dishes he made in the game, real. He will try making them once more. He then prepares three dishes at once. Rim picks up his chopsticks and says he will first taste the boiled zucchini. He brings the food to his mouth, wondering if he will be able to taste it as he did in the game, real. He starts chewing the food slowly. Rim puts his hand on his head and tries hard to remember the taste, but with no success he gets frustrated, saying that unfortunately, he still can't taste anything. He then looks at all the dishes he prepared and thinks that he can't be disappointed. After all, there's no need to feel despondent. After all, he can already consider it a miracle that he can taste and cook inside the game real. Rim notices that the taste reminds him of gum when it loses its sweetness. Definitely, it's the worst hell for a chef. However, he imagines himself in the game and now feels hopeful. He imagines that within the game, it's as if he were truly living. Rim continues tasting his dishes, trying at all costs to taste something. However, only his in-game version ends up happy when eating anything. Rim keeps chewing his dinner. He eats everything, leaving nothing on the plates. Rim comments that he eats everything, even though it doesn't appear so. Rim, worried, imagines that it's the first time he has eaten everything since losing his senses, and wonders if this will ever be cured. He thinks that one way or another, he needs to fill his stomach in any way possible. He looks at his headphones and wonders if he should enter the game again. He then takes the green liquid that comes with the game. He puts on his headphones, quickly lies down on the bed, and then begins to concentrate on the game. He spends some time playing real. He obtained a strong horn that increases his attack by 30. Rice imagines that he only worked making snacks, so he wanted to try making western food. He notices some lizard monsters, and wonders if he should try cooking with their meat, as he has never tried before. Rice activates his weak point skill and thinks this is a good chance to try. He then enters a battle with all those lizards at once, as he now has more battle experience. Rice thinks the fight can't get violent so as not to spoil the meat, so he needs to finish it quickly. Rice notes that the weak point is on the lizards' foreheads, and he will need to make them into pieces. Rice jumps, gathering power in his weapon, and then strikes the lizard's forehead, hitting its weak point. A man watching the fight asks if that person isn't Rice. The woman says yes, it's the guy who defeated the boss. They wonder why Rice would be fighting lizards. They comment that the baby red spider provides webs for the user to sell, while the rake lizard only gives a measly amount of money so no one is interested in hunting them. The man gets stressed, imagining that Rice is inexperienced and apparently not as amazing as he thought. After all, who would waste time with lizards? Rice continues frantically killing the lizards. After all, he doesn't want to eat spiders, he wants to eat lizard meat. Rice finishes all the lizards, thus gaining some low-level magic stones and lizard meat. He notices this magic stone he had never seen before. If ingested, it gives five more attack points. If it's for defense, the magic stone gives five defense points when ingested. Rice is unsure of what it is, but apparently it's something he can ingest, so he decides to keep it. At this moment, he doesn't notice something approaching him. The system notifies him of a talent achievement with the name, Feet Achieved. Is this person a layer? 
Rice reads this and asks what it means. Rice looks back and notices something approaching him. It was a huge spider with flowers on its head. The spider asks Rice not to be scared. Even though she asks this, Rice is very startled. He asks how he wouldn't be scared in a situation like this. The spider looks closely at Rice and says she is the queen of that forest and has a request for him. The talent achievement that had appeared for Rice had the requirement of killing 100 rake lizards and not killing any baby red spiders. Since Rice did this, he was rewarded with a secret mission from the Red Spider Queen. Rice is confused by all this. He wonders what secret mission this is. After all, what should he do at that moment? Maybe just stand still? He then looks at the spider and notices that standing still did nothing. He looks at the spider's hairy body and praises the developers of the real game for doing a good job making her disgusting. The Spider Queen asks if he will stand still. She asks if Rice is an ally or something like that. Rice still doesn't understand anything. At this moment, a man watches from afar and wonders what Rice is doing. The man observes better and says he has never seen that spider appearing in front of any player. He imagines it must be a mission. The man thinks that Rice receiving this mission is surprising since it's not common. After all, understanding the requirements for missions to appear is very difficult. Besides, there are various rarities like professional, secret, rare, epic, etc. This increases the rivalry among users. The man then, little by little, gets closer to Rice. He is pensive, wondering what the mission might be and if he should try to approach. The man gets closer and closer, imagining that the mission involves spiders, and he hates spiders. Rice notices the man approaching and realizes he has never seen him before. The man greets Rice and says that the spider caught his attention, which is why he is there. At that moment, a huge drop of blood falls to the ground. It was from the man who approached. The spider immediately stabbed its leg into his chest. The man dies and starts to disappear from the game. He wonders why he was suddenly struck. The man then disappears, leaving only his boots behind. Rice asks what the hell just happened. He looks at the boots and sees they are made with lizard leather and red spider threads. Rice notes that apparently, you can create boots in the game, and that guy created these. The boots in question give seven agility points. Someone watches Rice with binoculars and says he got a very good item since it was created by a player rather than being from a shop. The other man comments that Rice has good manners, so he doesn't know if he will pick up the boots on the ground. The man with the binoculars says that even with good manners it's fine. After all, it's an item dropped on the ground. The man with the binoculars looks again, and Rice already has the boots on his feet. He asks if this person didn't have good manners, but he's all happy with someone else's boots. The queen then asks one last time if Rice is an ally or not. Rice didn't know it was something he needed to answer, and then replies that yes, he is an ally. The spider queen then explains that she and her babies lived in harmony until a group of rake lizards appeared and started eating her babies. The queen also says that the princess lost the race and must have led the group of lizards to a place not far from the forest. And as long as the princess lives, the spider's babies will continue to suffer. The Spider Queen further comments that eventually, the lizards will expel the spiders from the forest. So if Rice is truly an ally, he must kill the lizard princess. Rice says he understands the situation, and imagines that he is apparently forming an alliance with a spider. The system notifies him that the mission is to kill the lizard princess somewhere in the forest. The reward will be a new skill besides a hidden achievement. The Spider Queen then says she will be waiting for Rice to successfully complete this mission. Rice is curious about this secret quest, and informs the spider that he will take a look around the forest. Rice bids farewell to the spider, and the only thing he can think of is that he is hungry. Rice starts preparing a lizard skewer and thinks he tried something like this only in Vietnam. Suddenly something catches his attention, shining in front of him. The system notifies him that Rice has gained a passive skill called Chef's Luck. Any food made above the delicious rating will have a small chance of giving a temporary buff. Rice looks at his glowing hand and wonders what that could be. He imagines he must have gained a new skill from cooking so much. Now he thinks he should cook even more. The delicious rake lizard skewer is finally ready. It increases satiety by 20 and defense by 1. Rice imagines that if he eats that skewer, his abilities will increase, and he finds this mechanic interesting within the real game. Rice then takes the skewer in his hand, calmly brings it to his mouth, and starts chewing slowly since he has never tasted it before. And then he widens his eyes, surprised by the taste. He was surprised because he imagined the taste would moderately resemble Samgyupsal. Tears of joy flow from Rice's eyes as he imagines it is sensational. It's the exact taste of grilled lizard with nuoc sauce from Vietnam. Rice is happy, because even the dry taste at the end is the same. The system notifies that the lizard skewer gave Rice a temporary buff, increasing his defense and energy. Rice looks up and sees the increase in his attributes after eating the skewer and finds it interesting. Rice begins to imagine that even as a cook, he can also enhance his abilities. Rice smiles and imagines that the more he understands about the game real, the more greedy he becomes. Rice starts stretching and says he should hunt to complete the spider's mission. He then starts hunting the rake lizards nearby. He immediately finishes off one of them, but there are several lizards in that region. Rice keeps his weak point skill active all the time, observing his surroundings. He then turns and notices one of the lizards. This lizard is furious, charging at Rice. Rice doesn't waste any time and quickly finishes off that lizard with his giant chicken horn. At that moment, more rake lizards approach Rice. 
He looks at them and comments that apparently there are quite a few of them that day. Rice is startled to realize that all the lizards were attacking at the same time. He charges energy into his weapon and thinks that he can't do much, since he didn't plan to fight that way. With a single powerful attack, he finishes off all the lizards at once. Rice is pleased because he seems to be getting very good at hunting. A blonde woman is watching Rice through the system. She enjoys seeing how well he is doing. The blonde woman then smiles and is eager to see more. Rice is eating his skewers and feels like he heard a laugh, but has no idea what it could be. Rice continues eating his skewers even with several rake lizards approaching him. With each bite he takes, he says it tastes even better. The lizards jump at Rice. The lizard is worried because Rice shows no fear. Rice simply says that their meat is delicious. Rice gives a huge smile and says he should definitely make more skewers out of them. His hunger is at 20% at that moment. Rice defeated all the lizards that were there, but he can only think about being hungry. At this moment, a red spider slowly approaches Rice. He notices her arrival. The red spider then produces a web ball called Best Sticky Spider Web and gives it to Rice. Rice takes the web in his hand and asks if it's really for him. The spider runs away and he thanks her for it. The system notifies that the red spider web is extremely resistant and can be used to make various items. Rice wonders if the spider gave him the web as a thank you for hunting the rake lizards. Rice then puts the web in his inventory, thinking that it shouldn't be a problem for him to keep it. The day goes by. Rice is preparing another rake lizard skewer. He keeps singing while the skewer is cooking. He earns more mana stones and also gains a new achievement, unlocking the title Rake Lizard Exterminator for eliminating 200 rake lizards. Rice unlocks another achievement, a ferocious appetite for consuming 100 identical meals. The achievement increased his maximum hunger by 100. His weak point skill increased to rank E. His optimized skills improved by 25% in an instant attack. 40 hunger points are consumed. A person watches Rice from a distance. It was the man who was killed by the Spider Queen. The man says he finally found Rice. The man approaches Rice asking for permission. Rice greets him as well. Rice notices it's the same man from before. Rice quickly says that he is probably there for the boots and explains that he only tried them on but was going to return them. The man explains that it wasn't that since it's just an attributed item and Rice could actually keep those boots. Rice is confused and asks what an attributed item means. Does it mean that only one person can use it? The man explains that he died for nothing and that it was costly to do so since he needs to hunt and gather materials to make them again. The man looks dejected while Rice apologizes and asks what items he will be looking for. The man asks if Rice is referring to all the necessary materials. Rice says yes. After all, it was his fault. The man finds it strange that Rice is being so nice and asks if he simply wants to give the materials. Rice summons the items from his inventory, saying he has lizard leather, spider web, a lot of meat, and spices. The man notices the spider web and asks if it's the best sticky spider web by name. Rice responds that it is and asks why. The man says it's the best possible material and asks if Rice doesn't know that. Rice says he thought all webs were the same. The man asks who he really is because it seems like something is off. Rice just says that real is his first game. The man takes the web from Rice's hand and says he really seems like a noob and decides to accept the web. Rice asks the man if that item isn't too strong. The man replies that it is, as every game is based on rarities. The man also asks if Rice is doing the Lizard Princess mission. Rice replies that he is. Rice even imagines how she might taste. He also thinks he should change his items since he's using beginner gear. The man remains silent, so Rice suspects it's true that his equipment is bad. Apparently, even there, you can't survive with bad items. The man cracks his neck and says he will change that situation now. He grabs a lizard skin, takes out a needle and thread, and starts sewing the skin. Rice is amazed to see that. Rice, surprised, says it's been a while since he saw someone so focused, and he imagines he can't just sit and watch. Rice sits next to the man who is sewing. He prepares to help too. Rice grabs some rake lizard bodies and frantically starts making something with that leather and meat. The man keeps sewing a boot at full speed. The progress is already at 28%. A man with purple hair asks if that person is Rice. The man with green hair says yes, and that there's someone next to him they've never seen. Rice and the man are working at full speed on their tasks. The people watching say that the man is definitely not just a helper. The man finally finishes making two pairs of boots and a spider web trap. The man asks what Rice was doing during that time. Rice says it's called dismemberment. The man says he understands and asks Rice to see the result. He puts on the boot he made and says that using good materials gives great results, as the boot gives 10 agility, 5 attack, and 5 defense. The man happily gives something to Rice and says it's a present. Rice looks at the present and the system notifies him that it's a very sticky net that paralyzes enemies of up to two stars for 10 seconds. The man cracks his neck again and asks Rice what he thinks of the present. Rice, happy, thanks him, saying that item will be very useful against a boss. The man wishes him good luck against the lizard princess and says he will disconnect to sleep. Rice says that's fine. The man starts to disappear from the game, saying he already added him, and they will see each other later. Rice shouts for him to wait, but it's too late. Rice feels embarrassed because he didn't even ask the man's name, so he needs to ask later. Rice becomes thoughtful and imagines he should complete the quest quickly. He starts walking through the forest. Suddenly he encounters a giant lizard. 
Rice imagines that he finally found the Lizard Princess, so he just needs to defeat her. The Lizard Princess stares at him intently. At that moment, two enormous lizards jump at Rice. He didn't expect there to be more lizards there. Rice prepares for combat, imagining that he will have to defeat those two as well. Rice jumps at the chief lizards, thinking he needs to be very careful. At this point, Rice's only concern is not spoiling their meat. Rice goes all out and activates his weak point skill. He hits one of the lizards dead on. Despite bleeding heavily, the lizard remains standing. Rice, surprised, looks at it and asks why it didn't die even though it was a fatal blow. The lizard quickly hits Rice with its tail, sending him flying. Rice is thrown into the air and becomes worried because this is completely different from the unicorn chicken, and these aren't even the bosses yet. The giant lizard just laughs, watching Rice fly away and causing an explosion where he landed. Severely injured, Rice realizes he can't rely solely on his current abilities, because in his current state, he won't be able to win. Rice recalls that he needed help even against the unicorn chicken, and now he has to deal with a stronger opponent alone. Rice looks at the lizards and thinks they are just ingredients. He focuses on the lizard princess and realizes he needs to use something. He decides to use the mana stones. He bites into the mana stones he has with him. The system notifies that one stone gave him five attack points and the other stone gave him five defense points. He grabs his weapon and feels his body getting stronger with these buffs. He immediately starts running toward the giant lizards. He quickly activates his weak point skill. He also activates his focus to strengthen the tip of his weapon. The weapon passes by the lizard's head, which the lizard notices. The attack hits the lizard's tail squarely. The monster quickly turns and tries to bite Rice. Rice swiftly hits its forehead, where the weak point is. The attack is strong enough to pierce it. The lizard princess watches from afar, hearing the other lizard's cries. She then stares at Rice as if furious. Rice is exhausted after defeating the two giant lizards. The system notifies that the lizard princess has recognized Rice as an enemy. Rice then thinks that the princess will finally attack. The lizard princess lets out a loud roar, causing the dead lizards to start rising. Rice shields himself from the strong wind and asks what the hell is happening. Rice wonders why the lizards have revived and turned white. He starts attacking them with all his strength. He keeps attacking as best he can. At that moment, the lizard princess leaps. She quickly strikes at Rice, who barely dodges. Rice falls to the ground, extremely scared. There was no one nearby in the forest to help Rice. He sees the two lizards coming towards him. Rice continues attacking with all his strength. His HP is very low at that moment. He then hears something behind him and turns. He notices the lizard princess shedding her skin. The system notifies that she is entering her second form. Rice looks up, worried, and thinks that this second form will be a problem, especially since his HP is low. He then remembers the sticky web he got from the man earlier. He thinks he should use that web Ether made to paralyze the boss for 10 seconds. The lizard princess quickly charges at Rice. Without wasting time, he throws the web at the boss, praying it will work. The web hits the lizard princess squarely. Rice gathers energy in his weapon and says he needs to attack now. He strikes with all his might at the lizard princess's head. The lizard princess opens her eyes and immediately moves her paw, hitting Rice and throwing him away. Rice flies far and crashes hard into the ground. The lizard princess notices that the web is expanding. The web then forces the lizard princess's body against the ground, paralyzing her for the next seven seconds. Severely injured, Rice realizes he needs to do something quickly since his HP is very low. He looks at the lizard princess and says that in seven seconds, the paralysis will end, but he doesn't have the strength to defend himself when she attacks. At that moment, night falls and the system notifies that the unicorn chicken buff will take effect due to the time of day. Rice gains 15 more attack points until dawn. Rice exclaims that he had forgotten about the ability he gained from defeating the unicorn chicken boss. Rice becomes excited because a light has appeared at the end of the tunnel. He starts running at full speed towards the lizard princess. The lizard princess just watches, still under the web's effect. Rice uses all his remaining strength to activate his focus point skill directly on the lizard princess's weak spot. Rice's eyes shone brightly as he shouted out his focus point skill. Meanwhile, the Lizard Princess couldn't react due to the paralysis. Rice slashed through the princess. The system immediately notified him that he had killed the Lizard Princess. Severely weakened, Rice couldn't believe he had actually succeeded. He watched her body disappear, and the system notified him that he had unlocked the achievement Lizard's Nightmare, which required killing the Lizard Princess for the first time. Rice received an F-rank skill called Lizard's Power, a passive ability that allows the user to climb up to 20 meters. Many people who were hiding and watching couldn't believe that Rice, who was just a cook until now, had killed a boss that even the five of them couldn't defeat. The system also notified him that the lizard princess's body had turned into a quest item. Rice didn't understand, wondering what he should do with it. He raised the web and asked if he should give it to the Spider Queen. At that moment, he heard a voice saying there was no need for that. He quickly turned to see who had spoken. It was the Spider Queen, accompanied by several baby spiders. She said there was no need since she was there. The Spider Queen announced that the revenge was complete and that her people would no longer suffer. All the people hiding were shocked to see such a large spider and wondered if it was a linked mission. Rice told the Spider Queen that it was his first mission, so he didn't know if everything went right. 
the queen responded that he did splendidly and that now the existence of the lizards would gradually diminish. Rice remarked that this meant there would be fewer lizards for the players to hunt, so he wasn't sure if that was really a good thing. The Spider Queen explained that the Lizard Princess would return again since their battle never ends. She also mentioned that before that happens, they would show their power. As she said this, a large army of red spiders began to march. The spiders spotted some nearby lizards and quickly defeated them. Rice watched the spiders kill the lizards and asked if this wouldn't affect the system, since there might not be any lizards left to hunt. The Spider Queen simply said that Rice had worked hard, and now he would receive a reward. Rice's body began to glow, which he found amazing. The real game informed him that, thanks to his efforts, peace had come to the forest for a time, until a new lizard princess emerged. The system notified Rice that he had earned the skill F-Rank Poison Pouch for completing the secret mission. Additionally, the system also notified him that he had unlocked the achievement Guardian of the Spiders for completing the Spider Queen's Revenge. The reward was a 10-point increase in all stats. Rice was amazed as his hand glowed purple while reading that the skill he earned allowed his body to produce a poison that paralyzes any enemy with less than two stars for three seconds the target would feel nausea. The system also notified him that he had unlocked the achievement Pioneer of a Scenario, where a player needs to complete a scenario directly related to the main story. The reward was the profession Pioneer. Rice found it incredible that suddenly many notifications appeared, and he now had the profession of a Pioneer. The people who had been hiding came to congratulate Rice for defeating a boss alone. Rice was startled to see so many people surrounding him and said it was just luck. People wanted to buy something from him, and he just asked for some time to prepare things. Rice announced that to celebrate, he would sell the lizard meat at half price. People from various regions began to gather to try the dish prepared by Rice. While preparing the food, Rice said it was nice to have so many people there, but it was very hot standing in front of the fire, and it had been a while since he did this. Someone approached and handed him a cloth, asking him to wipe his sweat with it. Rice thanked them, and then turned around. He noticed it was Melina, and asked what she was doing there. She replied that she had just used the find friend function to locate Rice. Rice is surprised to learn that such a feature exists. Melina says she heard about his achievements and congratulates him. They continue talking through the night. Melina comments that Rice seems to be getting used to things. Rice agrees and asks if she wants to eat something. She says she wants to eat what he's preparing and also help him with her new skill. Rice thinks it's amazing but isn't sure if he'll need it. They look around and see so many people present that they are fighting to stay in line. Melina asks Rice to wait a moment. She takes a deep breath and then yells loudly using her skill, asking everyone to please stay in line. People are startled by the powerful wind that blew towards them. Melina yells that they will sell until the ingredients run out, so they can wait patiently. Melina smiles and asks everyone to please wait calmly. The night becomes calmer as everyone decides to respect the line. Time passes, and only one piece of meat remains. Rice thanks her for her help. She says she has done this many times, so it's no problem. Rice says that the last piece is hers, and asks how she would like it cooked. She happily requests it well done, please. At that moment, someone approaches them. The person asks if it's rice there. He comes closer, and asks if there is any lizard steak left and if he can order one. Rice replies that there isn't any more. The man comments that apparently there is still one on the grill. Melina quickly grabs the meat and throws it into her mouth so as not to lose the piece. Rice is startled and tells her not to do that, or she will burn herself. The man runs his hand through his hair and says that it seems the lady has already reserved the steak. He asks for anything since he was there to try something from Rice. Rice shows him a leftover chicken skewer. The man says that will do. The man is happy and says he will finally taste Rice's food and thanks him for the meal. However, internally, the man thinks that he is also a chef and is there to learn about the food, imagining it can't be anything special. The man says that in the community, all anyone talks about is rice, 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 but apparently this rice is nothing special. The man starts eating the chicken skewer, thinking there's no way Rice's character is better than his. The man continues chewing calmly, then he is shocked to notice something. His eyes start trembling. That wasn't supposed to be possible. Internally, he begins to scream. How is it possible for this chicken skewer to taste like that? He feels as if the chicken skewer is hitting his body and says it's incredibly delicious. He starts drooling and admits that it tastes amazing. Time passes, and Rice has logged out of the game and gone to his new job. The restaurant's chef is impatient. He wonders who this Rice is, and apparently isn't an ordinary guy. It turns out this chef is the blonde man who went to taste Rice's dish in the game. Rim is also in the restaurant, and all the chef can think about is how Rice's dish is different. The chef wonders if this Rice is an experienced chef, maybe a famous one seen on TV. The chef recalls his encounter with Rice in the game after tasting the dish. Rice asks if he is feeling all right, Melina can't believe he fainted because the dish was so good. Melina asks him to stop exaggerating. The blonde man, who calls himself the king of Korean cuisine, is enamored with Rice's dish, asking how it was grilled so perfectly. He was amazed, and asks Rice how he managed to make it that way. He also says he would love to learn that secret recipe. Rice is just speechless. The blonde man says he actually works in a restaurant and that his name is the king of Korean cuisine. He says the place he works at is famous on Instagram. The blonde man says Rice seems to work in a restaurant too, so as fellow chefs, they should exchange tips. 
Rice says he didn't do anything special, just followed the basic grilling recipe. The man can't believe it. Smiling, he says he understands. After all, not just anyone would reveal their secret recipes to someone they don't know. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, and like the video. Thank you.